in this morning. You know why? Just recorded the whole video with the microphone off. <sighs> okay, brush it off. Here we go. If YouTube was a video game, I just leveled up. Think of it that way. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. You'll never know. Uh, it is Sunday. It's another Sunday. Here we go. Fresh start to the fresh week. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Mm. All right, everyone, I hope you're doing well. I am excited to talk to you today about uh, something that I'm sure we're all feeling a little bit of withdrawals from, like we're lacking, and that is travel today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, some things that I've learned while traveling, but coming from someone who definitely considers themselves more of a homebody. Now what I mean by homebody is I love my space, I love my apartment, I love being alone in my apartment, not having to do anything, talk to anyone, be by myself. No, that's not true. I'm definitely an extrovert. I definitely like being social, spending time with my friends and family, but I do consider myself a homebody just because I like the relaxation aspect of just chilling out, being in my own space, and like most adults, I love bedtime as well. I love being in my bed. So, for someone who generally, like when I'm home, doesn't like to go out a lot, I don't do, I don't, I'm not really into like the club thing, the bar scene anymore, as much as I used to be. And so for someone who, when I'm home, likes to be home, I do still enjoy vacationing. I do still like traveling. I've done uh, two big trips to Europe in the last two years. I lived abroad and worked for six months. Um, I've gone for little like all-inclusive resort trips like to Cuba and things like that. So I do like to vacation still. That being said, when I vacation, that's still very much my relaxation time or I, I, I consider it relaxation time. It's a break from work. It's a break from your everyday life. So I do still like to relax during that time. So uh, I usually take a little bit of my homebody persona with me. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is how to travel as a homebody, how I travel as a homebody. The first thing is I usually, for my bigger trips that I've taken, I actually um, travel with the same friend. And one of the great things about traveling with her is that she is one who likes to take initiative on uh, organizing things. So um, great sense of direction and then also she sort of is the one who, you know, we're going to this place, we have to go see this, we have to go here, book this. Now, I don't like doing those things. I'm not an excursion person, I'm not a book a tour person when I go on vacation. Uh, like I said before, it's my relaxation time, so I kind of more, more so than not want to just chill out. But when you are going somewhere, you know, to another country, somewhere you haven't been before, I will admit that yes, of course, you want to see as much and do as much as you possibly can. So traveling with someone who likes to take initiative on those kinds of things is great. A second, um, a sense of direction, if they have a sense of direction, also a good thing. Uh, when I traveled by myself to Korea and taught there for six months, most of the things that I did outside of work for, for fun, for leisure, were with other English speaking teachers, either that had already done it before or had a good sense of direction. And, um, a willingness to sort of organize those things. I lived in Korea for six months and took the subway by myself zero times. Absolutely zero times. I didn't have the confidence to do so. I was too scared to do so. Even when I would go out with my friends and they were kind of leading the way, taking the, the subway, I would make a point of just to myself trying to see what they were seeing. <laughs> trying to um, kind of direct myself as if, hypothetically speaking, I wasn't with them. And I still struggled. And so I never did that by myself. I either went places with people or didn't go at all. And that's a minor, I hate to use the word regret, but looking back, I wish that I had kind of just bit the bullet and, and, and done that. So. <laughs> Um, traveling, having a good travel buddy that will uh, help you kind of pull you out of the hotel, pull you out of the hostel, and has a good sense of what to do and how to do it is a great, great tip for my fellow homebodies out there. Another great thing 
another great tool rather to have uh, in your back pocket is Google Translate. If you have a smartphone and you can download the Google Translate app, it is fantastic. Now, the last time I used it was, used it a lot, was when I was in Korea and that was 2016. So I'm sure it's only got better since then with all their updates. But I remember um, there is a, a feature where you can actually use your camera and put your camera on with the app open over the text, like over the text in another language, and it will come through as the language that you want it to translate to. That was super clear. Um, so I wanted to translate Korean to English. I would put my camera over the Korean text, whether I'm at a restaurant looking at the menu, it's a street sign, and it would do its very best mostly accurately, to uh, translate that text that you're actually looking at to English. So speaking of restaurants, that was mostly where I used it because unfortunately not all restaurants design their menus the way Chelsea likes and that is with pictures beside every food item. Uh, I would use that to my advantage a lot to sort of understand what I was looking at. So Google Translate is definitely a great tool to use. Um, besides the camera feature, you can obviously just type in text, um, just add the, I think I had the Korean keyboard added to my phone and you can kind of type in what you see, you could translate that way. And I believe, I definitely now, if not back then, you can actually do it from speech too. So I'm actually learning um, Korean now, I know four years too late, right? Via Rosetta Stone and to sort of test my pronunciation sometimes, I will speak into the Google, Google Translate app and it will tell me in English what I said. Sometimes it's right, other times it's not, but that's a great feature of the app as well. Now, despite you having this, this app available to you when you're traveling, whether it be for a vacation or somewhere that you're moving, I do encourage um, learning the very bare minimum of basics as well. That's something I didn't really do going to Korea, but it was because I was um, speaking with my aunt and uncle who had gone and done the teaching thing in Korea prior to going. And I had asked them, you know, is it important that I learn the basics of Korean language before I go over there? And my uncle had actually said back when they had gone, which had been like 10 years prior, he said, no, A, in your job, they don't really want you to speak Korean to the students at all. And B, even out in public, you, um, People, like the locals will often, if you try to speak Korean to them, they'll answer you in English or he said from his experience, they would actually tell him he was saying something wrong even when he wasn't just because they want to learn English as well. Again, this is dependent on the age group and who you're speaking to in what context, in what context, but, um, so yeah, he told me that it wasn't uh, too important and I didn't find that it was too important for me to get around when I got there. Living there for the time that I did, I obviously did pick up on some things, um, like how to say, take me back to where my apartment was, um, the, the basics, you know, please, thank you, hello, goodbye. Um, I also had the opportunity to teach very young, young students. So I was doing, I think, um, students that were three years old there with no English experience. So I often picked up from them because when they first started in school, that's all they could speak was Korean. I picked up um, odds and ends from them and I'd ask my Korean partner teacher, you know, what does this mean? And so I picked up some language that way. So I do encourage learning what you can. Um, don't make a point of, you know, spending, putting too much time into it, depending on how long you're going on this vacation or living. Um, because you will pick up some things there, but again, Google Translate is fantastic, so I definitely recommend that you download that if you're going somewhere for an extended period of time. Something else, now this is probably, if you're a true, true homebody, you'll know what I'm talking about here. I am, used to be, I've grown up so much, I used to be the queen of homesickness. Now, I would get, I mean, if I spent like the night at my grandma's for more than a night when I was a kid, I'd get homesick. Um, I remember I spent like a week with my, at my aunt's house when I was a kid, when I was like early teenager, 13, oh, numbers are hard, words are hard. When I was 13, I spent like a week, which like in the same province, it was like two hours away at my aunt's house and I got homesick then. Um, so my... What I'm trying to say is if you are someone who frequently experiences homesickness or just in general, like missing your friends and family, A, be proactive and be conscious of this before booking your trip. 
if it's something that you're going, if it's uh, a place that you're going to work abroad, don't sign a contract for longer than that you think that you'll be willing to stay. If it's a vacation, don't book a super long vacation when like A, you're traveling by yourself, B, it's somewhere, you know, across the world and C, you're traveling, um, if you haven't gone for a vacation for that long, gone on a vacation for that long ever before. So try to be self-aware in that sense. So besides being proactive when you're booking your trip or when you're planning your trip, B, when you're there, worst case scenario, if you find yourself in a position that you've been traveling for a long time or Let's be honest, homebodies, sometimes it's as soon as you arrive, you're homesick. <laughs> Don't come home, okay? Do not come home because you are homesick. You will more than likely regret it. It's not worth it. Remember, like, that saying, you know, it's not goodbye, it's see you later when you're, like, seeing, leaving someone you're not going to see for a long time? You're not saying goodbye to your home. You're not saying goodbye to your family and friends. They are there. They will be there when you get back. It's just see you later. Take advantage of where you are. The fact that you were able to travel, okay? The fact that you, hey, let's be honest, travel anxiety is a thing. The, tra the fact that you made it there, you know, whether you're by yourself or with a friend, you spent all this time and money and organization and you packed and you got on the plane and you're tired and all of that effort into going to this wonderful place, soak it up. Go see what you can see. Um, Again, going back to point A, if you got someone by your side to push you to do those things, even better, but do not come home early from a commitment that you've made just because you think that, you know, you absolutely need to be home, you absolutely need to see your family. Don't forget people, it's 2020, number two, okay? You, we have FaceTime, we have Skype. If you miss mommy, FaceTime mommy, okay? She's there. You can video chat people, you don't need to come home and give up on this great opportunity in the middle of it just because you are homesick. Like, I don't know. I'm feeling as I'm saying this to you right now, I'm like, okay, practice what you preach, Charles. I, I did come home early from Korea because other reasons, but mostly because I was homesick. So to be fair though, I'm talking to you from experience. So I'm giving you guys this information from experience. I mean, I always like to say, no regrets because at one time or another you wanted to do what you wanted to do, so what's done is done. But because I know what it's like to be a homebody, to be a little hermit crab, and to want to be home and, and you know feel that comfort of home, if you've already made the move to go, just stay where you are. Now I'm rambling. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> uh, that is all I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, I'd love to do a part two to this. if more things happen to come to mind. So what I'm trying to say is just get out, homebodies, leave the house when you can. Uh, if it's a day trip, if it's a weekend trip, you know, when all of this stuff is over and done with, um, or at least it's slowed down and you have the ability to travel again, do so. If you live um, near a border city, if it's just a little weekend trip, a day trip, go go see another country, go to another city you've never seen before, do your stuff and, and stay there. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I wanted to share with you guys. If you guys have any uh, questions or ideas for sort of a part two for this video, um, how me as someone who considers themselves a homebody kind of deals with this or that while traveling near or far, uh, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to talk to you guys about that. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Um, even if it's just getting out of the house, going for a walk this week, or traveling to the grocery store or the park, do something fun this weekend. Pretend like you're traveling, bring your passport so it feels more real. <laughs> Whatever you gotta do. Have a great week, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Cheers!